Well, I'm stoked because today I got my 50th subscriber. And it's a great feeling. It's, it's awesome to get subscribers. It's a signal to me that the work I'm putting in here on YouTube is helping people and it's benefiting people. If somebody hits a subscribe button, that's a signal to me that my content has helped them. And that's what I'm here to do, so it's a good feeling to see that come through on the channel. So like I did in my 10th subscriber video, I want to take you in to the YouTube studio and show you how the channel's doing, show you how it's grown. I want to talk about my experience and my journey so far on YouTube. I want to talk about the things I've learned about YouTube and about making videos and just give you a general channel update because, hey, it's grounds to celebrate, 50th subscriber. So let's jump into it. All right, so here it is. Here's the YouTube studio platform and this is the main dashboard. So let's go over to analytics. All right, so let's go to... Let's go to lifetime. Okay, so you can see the channel so far has gotten 1,209 views. I have 43 hours, 43.7 hours of watch time. 48 new subscribers over this time range. This, there always seems to be a delay in this because it says 50 right here, but it says 48 there. Let's look at the watch time. So you can see the watch time trend kind of follows the views trend. The subscriber trend kind of does too. I think this is when I posted my my 10th subscriber video. And it was really cool because I got a lot of good, I wouldn't call it like feedback, but I got a lot of support on that. I got a lot of views on it. People were, I got a couple comments or like one comment where somebody's like, this is really cool. Like I wish you nothing but the best on your channel. That was awesome. So shout out to, shout out to that guy. That was awesome of you. And I got, I got quite a few subs in that amount of time. I think it was like five or seven in a couple of days. So that was really cool. All right, let's jump over to content. Content, okay, we already looked at views. Impressions, and we're still going over the lifetime here. So impressions, the, the impressions, that's where somebody gets a chance to click on the video. I think everybody who's watching this probably knows what an impression is by now. So 37.9 thousand, impression click-through rate, 2.4%, average view duration, two minutes and 10 seconds. Let's look at the audience. Let's see, any cool stats in here? Let's scroll down. Okay, watch time from subscribers, 85.3%. Oh no, from not subscribed. Okay, so watch time, well watch time from subscribers, not subscribed, subscribed 14.7. 100% male. Coming down here, age. Okay, so 18 to 24 years old, that's 21.6%. 25 to 34, 56%, and 35 to 44 is 22.4%. I mean, that makes sense. That makes sense that people who are interested in business and entrepreneurship and finance and real estate, these kinds of topics, they are in that age range. So I'm not at all surprised by that. Top geographies, United States, 18.8, India, 7.4, Philippines, 2.3, Albania, 1.0. That's kind of interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. Subtitles, okay, top subtitles. So no subtitles. Well, I, I figured that would actually be quite a bit higher. I thought most people wouldn't watch videos with subtitles. I don't watch them with subtitles. I don't particularly like subtitles. I think they're distracting. English subtitles, Polish translated, 0.3%. That's interesting. Okay, what else? Unique viewers. What is that, no data? Estimated number of people that watch your content within the selected range, two days processing. We still in lifetime? Yeah, 48 subscribers, okay. Cool, so there's some of the basic channel stats there. Research, no research. I've actually used this before to think about different things that I wanna start talking about. And so you can see Excel VLOOKUP, I just did a video on that. I'm gonna do a video on pivot table. So these are things that have a high search volume on YouTube. So people are searching for this content. They're wanting this content. I know a lot about Excel. I'm an expert in Excel. So I figured let's do a bunch of Excel videos. And if you've been following my channel, you'll see that the last bunch of videos that I've done, I think like five have been Excel. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so I'm starting to do a ton of Excel videos. They're fun. I really enjoy making them. I don't like them as much as I like making update videos, but they're still fun to do. But channel update videos are always my favorite. I have so much fun doing this kind of stuff. So what else have I done? Okay, so there's the videos. I haven't done any live streams. I doubt that I ever will. Uh, posts, I don't even know what posts are. Use, use a community post to update your 
viewers with polls, images, and more. All right, I'll probably never use that. Maybe I will. Now, I have used playlists. So now that I have quite a few videos on my channel, I think I have 26 videos. Does this tell me? Does this give me a number? I don't think it gives me a number anywhere on here. Oh yeah, it does, okay, so one of 26. So I do have 26 videos on my channel. Anyway, now that I have more videos on my channel, I went through a couple days ago, and I put all these into categories. I made playlists to help people navigate the channel better and access you know, similar information. So I've tried to create my videos in a logical order, and I've tried to create and publish them in the order that I think would be most useful to people on any given topic. Now, I didn't really do that with Excel because if I wanted to do it with Excel, I would have started at the very beginning and like Excel basics, Excel 101. And I might make that video. I might do a very basic level course that takes you all the way through Excel. I haven't decided yet, but I am making Excel videos nonetheless. Anyway, these are all the videos on how to think about starting a business. And so if you've watched any of these videos, you'll know what they're about. But it's talking about things like, you know, why do you want to start a business? What is the purpose of your business and the purpose it's supposed to serve in your life? Risk and opportunity cost. A lot of things that as I've talked to people over the years about business, I've seen blind spots in people's knowledge. I've seen gaps where people maybe haven't thought something all the way through. So I've made these videos on those topics and you know, a lot of the blunders I've made and trust me, I've made plenty in life. So there are the starting a business videos and then I've got Frameworks and goal setting, I've got a lot more videos I want to make for this, and then obviously a ton that I want to make for Excel. And yeah, it's been pretty cool, it's been fun, it's been a lot of work. I will tell you what, man, making YouTube videos, it is not easy. It is, it's a ton of work to get a studio set up the way that you want it set up. It's a lot of work to put the thought into the videos of, you know, okay, what do I want to talk about? How do I want to talk about it? What's the good progression and the right flow? How's it, how does it make sense? You know, and if you're, if I'm delivering content and I watch that video and I just, the delivery wasn't on point, I'll go back and I'll redo it. So that takes time. It takes time to watch the videos after I shoot them and then edit the videos. It's so much work to make this kind of content, but I absolutely love it. I love making videos. It can be frustrating, especially if my delivery's off because I, I'm an OCD perfectionist and that, that can make life unnecessarily difficult. And, uh, but I get over that, you know, I, I work past the OCD, I work past the perfectionism, despite the challenges, and I guess it's kind of a double-edged sword because, I mean, literally as an OCD perfectionist, man, I will do things, like, if I do it, it's gonna be done right. And if it's not, I will redo it, and then I'll redo it. I remember when I was in like fifth grade, I think. Yeah, I used to, when we were practicing cursive, because back when I was in fifth grade, you would practice cursive in school. I remember just being so frustrated in class because I'd be in there and I'd be practicing the cursive and it wasn't good enough. It wasn't up to my standard. And so I would erase it and I'd redo it and I'd erase it and I'd redo it. And I literally remember erasing through papers to get my cursive, you know, quote unquote, perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. And I've been able to let that go more and more as time goes on, but it's still, it's been a challenge. And um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make making videos the easiest thing in the world, but I like it. So I keep doing it. Anyway, there was a tangent. There was a digression for you. So back to the content. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's worth noting. So I have 50 subscribers and that's great, that's awesome. 12 of those are people I know, people I've told about the channel. Just to give you an idea of you know, what, what is the ratio of people I've told about the channel versus I guess you'd call it like uh, organic channel growth. You know, people who have found the channel and subscribed to the channel just by watching the videos which is great. And I haven't gone out and just hustled everybody to subscribe to my channel. In fact, I make it a point to really not talk about my channel or tell people about it unless I think it's going to benefit them. So the people I've told about my channel, like in the last two days, for example, I've told two people about the channel because both people were talking about starting small businesses. So we talk, I hear their ideas, I detect some knowledge gaps or some blind spots, or I think maybe this person should consider this a little bit more or consider that a little bit more. Just this information will be valuably, generally valuable to them. And I send them to the channel, say, hey, you ought to check this out and watch these videos, watch this playlist. I think you'll benefit from it. You know, feel free to give me a call. Often I, obviously I know these people on a personal level, so I'll give them my time for free and talk to them about business and try to help get them on the right track. Because 
I love business and I like helping people and I especially want to help my friends. So that's always fun. So yeah, 12, 12, is it 12 or 11? I keep track because I'm an OCD perfectionist. So let's see. I've got it in my phone here. Oh, it's 13 now. Okay. Yeah. So it's 13 people I've told about the channel. And so, so what would that be? 50 minus 10 is 40 minus three is 37. So 37, you know, real subscribers, people who found my channel through YouTube and other means. And then 13 people I've told about the channel. And I, I presume they have subscribed because I've seen a subscriber come within a day of me telling them. So yeah, that's cool. YouTube has been fun. Uh, a couple things I've learned. I'll probably do another video just on the lessons I've learned about YouTube because I have learned a lot in creating this kind of content. One thing I've learned is to embrace the jump cut. And again, being that OCD perfectionist that I am, I don't want to embrace the jump cut. I want to do it right on the first take all the way through. But that's just not reasonable. For example, I just did a jump cut just now because I took a drink of water. And so it's like, I'm not gonna go back and reshoot the whole part of me talking about whatever it is I just talked about. It would take way too much time, but I do feel that impulse to do it. I do feel that inclination to make one mistake, redo the whole video. I get it, that's, that's not normal, but that's me. So I work around it, embrace the jump cut. That's a big, that's a big uh, piece of advice that I would give anybody thinking about doing a channel similar to this one. What else? I think another big piece of advice would, would be really let go of perfectionism. Like if you are a perfectionist and I know, well, I don't know how many people in the population are a perfectionist. I don't know what that statistic is, but I know that they, I'm not the only one in the world. Being a perfectionist is not normal. It does get in the way. It does create problems. It has an upside too, but it still sucks a lot of the time. But if you're going to make content, geez, really, if you're going to do anything in life, do your best to let go of perfectionism. And so I try to live by this rule, not just on YouTube, but in life in general, where I shoot for like 80%. Like if I can, if I can do something up to my 80% good enough level, then I'm like, all right, just call it 80% and let that ship sail. Like send it, let it go, get it done. 80% is good. 80% is good enough for most things most of the time. And my inclination is not that. My inclination is like, no, if it's not 100% perfect, then redo it. But it's, it's not reasonable to live that way. It's unrealistic to live that way. And anybody who's watching this who is a perfectionist, and if you have obsessive compulsive disorder like I do, then you're gonna know what I'm talking about. You're gonna be like, yeah, man, I get it. Like. I feel that too. I feel that compulsion to do things to the perfect level, the perfect level. Like perfection is not a real thing. So let go of perfectionism. Another big one too is enjoy the process. If you're creating content that you don't like to create, you're probably not going to make it. And if you, if you are making it, but you don't enjoy making it, then what the hell are you doing? Why are you making content if you don't enjoy it? <laughs> like, like life is short enough and it's hard enough. So don't go do a bunch of shit you don't want to do in order to get subscribers. That to me makes absolutely no sense. So enjoy the process and just in life in general, find a way to enjoy the little things. You know, the social media culture that we live in now where everybody is so focused on these apex outcomes. <sighs> There's so much bullshit out there. You got to let go of that. Enjoy the little things in life. That's really all we have at the end of the day. You have the moment and you have the little things. And if you find a way to enjoy the moment and you find a way to enjoy the little things of life, you're gonna have a better life. If you spend your entire life focusing on outcomes in the future and those outcomes don't materialize the way you want them to, you're gonna have a disappointing life. So enjoy the process, enjoy the little things for YouTube and for life. Another good lesson is have a process. If you're going to make content consistently, having a good, good and easy process is so valuable. So for example, when I did my last channel update video, I talked about moving my setup from a standing setup to a sitting setup. And the reason I did that was, well, it was two reasons. The, the main reason was so I could do screen shares. So like you probably notice if you're watching this video, I'm looking down at my monitor, I don't know why I'm looking down at my monitor. I'm used to looking down at notes to read things. And now I'm just speaking extemporaneously. So I don't have any notes. I've just got a monitor that I keep glancing at. But anyway, 
I've got this monitor below my camera so I can do screen shares and I can alternate between showing you my computer screen like this and then coming back and looking into the camera and talking to the camera like this. So, so that was the main reason I did that. And another reason I did it is because now my entire studio, which is also my home office because I work from home, is set up to where I don't have to move anything or do anything anytime. Before, when I was just standing in front of this wall right back here, I would have to set up my camera on the tripod in front of my desk because my, my desk used to be against that wall over there, which you can't see because it's behind you. And I'd have to set up my, my key light as well. And so now I don't have to do that. I, I have my computer set up, I have my monitor, my camera, my key light, my rim light, my backlight, my fill light, I got all the lights in here. And the only thing I have to do is clip on this lav mic and hit play. And that works, it's working out great. I can make videos much faster because it saves me a couple minutes and a couple, a couple minutes of setup and a couple minutes of takedown and that incentivizes me to make videos more frequently because there's not the process and the hassle of taking things out and setting them up and then tearing them down and changing the way the room is and the setup is. So get a setup, get a process to make it easy. I've also, you know, here's one of the things too, that as I've watched other videos on YouTube where people are talking about how to grow your channel, they, they talk about like thumbnail design and they talk about how, like how to get people to click your videos and what, what, what's gonna help the video get promoted in the algorithm. So some of those things are like your subscriber count and if you get subscribers, the view duration of a video, if somebody comments, if somebody hits the like button, whatever shows engagement, if they share it with somebody else, these are all the things that drive the algorithm. And I don't know what else does it, I haven't done a ton of research into it, but from what I do understand, those are the things that help your video and help your channel get promoted. So people are like, well, make these crazy thumbnail designs. And then you see them, you've seen them, I'm sure you've seen them all over YouTube where people are like pulling these wild faces and like, and I hate that shit. I, it's, I think it's so fucking annoying and I won't do it. And I hate that anybody does. It's like, and I get it, they're incentivized, they're, they're incentivized to get clicks and views and all that stuff. That's not my driver, that's not my motivator. My motivator is to help people and share what I've learned. I love teaching, I like helping people, I like sharing this kind of information, and I don't like clickbait thumbnails that have extreme images on them. It's not my style and it's never going to be. I'm not taking my channel that direction ever. I don't care if it costs me subscribers and channel growth. I'm not doing it. So yeah, that's, I don't even remember what I was talking about there. Lessons I've learned about YouTube. I guess that's a lesson that I've learned about YouTube is how to get people to click your videos. And maybe that's why I'm, maybe my channel could be doing even better if I did that on my channel. But I'm not going to because I don't like it. I have thumbnails that are descriptive of what you can expect the video to be. And that's why it's just a, it's a picture of me in front of the wall or like a picture of me with a screen share, with like an Excel spreadsheet, with a description that matches what the video is. Because I want people to look at that video and say, this will help me figure out this thing that I'm trying to learn. That's my purpose here. So I'm, I'm trying to build my channel and the content on it in such a way that people can go to that channel and navigate it as a resource. Kind of like if you opened a book and you went to the index and you were looking up information and then you know, you'd, find the, you'd find the page and then you'd find the header and the subheader and what you were looking for. That's what I'm trying to do with this channel. So hopefully that's working. What else? What else have I got to talk about? Yeah, you know, I think that's about it. I think I've covered everything I wanna cover in this video. I will do a video that's more structured than this on the lessons I've learned from YouTube and from making content and making videos. I've sh if you've made it this far, then you're a trooper because I'm sure this has been a long video, but I've shared some of those lessons in this video, but I think at some point I'll do a more detailed video on, you know, really the lessons that I've learned where I talk in my more traditional format, where I've got my notes and I've got some structure behind what I'm saying and I'm not just kind of rambling on. I, I don't even know how long this video has been going. It's, what does my camera say? Does it give me a recording time? No, but my mic does. 24 minutes and 15 seconds is how long I've had this, this equipment running. So the video is gonna be a couple minutes shorter than that. This is a long video. So if you've made it this far, you're a champ. 
Well, all right, that's about it. That's all I want to cover in this video. If you like this content, please subscribe. See you in the next one.